Hi guys, this is Dr. Neil Malden from the Western Veterinary Cancer Center, part of the Western Veterinary Specialist and Emergency Center located in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Um, I put up a video uh, dealing with some very basic cancer terms that you may deal with. Uh, and I've had a couple of requests to perhaps break that down into more manageable chunks. So what I've done is pull out each set of definitions that I talked about in the longer introduction to cancer terminology video and put them in little bite-sized pieces. So watch them each individually, watch the entire thing, and be sure and give us feedback if you found them useful. Another question we get is what is an oncologist and why am I here to see you? And so um, an oncologist or a veterinary oncologist is a doctor of veterinary medicine. So they've completed their veterinary program uh, who has advanced training in the diagnosis, treatment, and care of veterinary cancer patients. Uh, in order to call yourself a specialist or to be uh, considered board certified, you have to go through a series of steps and you have to be board certified then by the appropriate veterinary college. For medical oncology, so medical oncologists primarily deal with patients needing chemotherapy, uh, that uh, certification body is the American College of Veterinary Internal Medicine, a specialty of oncology. For radiation oncologists, so someone who primarily uh, deals with treating cancers with radiation, that board certification is performed through the American College of Veterinary Radiologists specialty of radiation oncology. And so then that kind of begs the question, what exactly does board certification entail? And it's a multi-step process. Um, the process of board certification in any specialty requires additional training after you've completed your veterinary degree. So you've gotten your DVM, your Doctor of Veterinary Medicine, and then you've decided that you want to go on and specialize in a certain branch of medicine, then there's a process that you have to follow uh, to go through that. So step one for most programs is to complete a one-year internship uh, that rotates through multiple specialties. So internal medicine, radiology, surgery, oncology, dermatology, you know, there's lots of different specialties and most internships try to rotate you through as many as they can in a year. And the reason for that is they want to expose you to multiple different facets of specialty medicine, but also to give you a chance to be really sure that you're picking the specialty that, that you want uh, as you move forward. Um, because it can be, there's almost a, a, a bewildering array of specialists now uh, and subspecialists. And so you really want to try to be sure you're picking what you want before you get started down that pathway. Uh, once you've completed your internship and decided on the branch of medicine you want to specialize in, then you will enter a focused residency uh, training just in the specialty that's being pursued. Uh, most programs are a minimum of three years, although they may be longer um, depending on the specialty itself and then if you have any advanced degree aspirations to go along with that. So if, uh, if your veterinarian decided that he wanted to be board certified in oncology and also have a PhD, well that's probably closer to a five or six year program rather than a three year program. Uh, there are also veterinarians who are board certified in multiple specialties, which typically means that they have to complete each part of that program separately to get certified in each of those specialties. Uh, most specialties have a research and publication requirement, meaning that you're mandated to perform original research in that field and then to publish that research in the appropriate peer-reviewed journal. And then the final step for any successful candidate to be board certified is to take and pass an examination that deals pretty much with all aspects of their chosen specialty. Uh, the nature of the exam will differ very much uh, between specialties. Um, a diagnostic radiologist is going to be expected to read CAT scans and ultrasounds and x-rays whereas a radiation oncologist is going to be expected to do uh, safety checks and calculations for radiation therapy and things along those lines. So each specialty has a, a core knowledge base that the, the certifying body thinks is required for you to know in order to be board certified by them. And that's really what the exam uh, for each specialty tests. So 
So if we look at what board certification entails, uh, it's a multi-step process that takes a little bit of planning, a little bit of time to complete. If we look at the entire process, it's an undergraduate education uh, to get into veterinary school. That usually will take you two to four years, uh, depending on the program. Then veterinary school uh, doctorate programs are all four years now. So you've got four years of veterinary school, then a one-year internship, and then a three-year residency. So all in all, it will take you 10 to 12 years to complete, and that's assuming that you do each step in immediate order, so that you graduated from veterinary school and immediately matched with an internship program, and then immediately went from your internship program into your residency. And then I guess the final question is, how do you find a veterinarian that's board certified? Um, if you know that that your dog has a heart problem and you want a cardiologist or it's got cancer and you want an oncologist, well, are there, there are resources out there to help you find a board certified veterinarian? Uh, and most specialties do maintain a database of board certified individuals. So if you've been board certified by a college, they will maintain a database uh, that's usually accessible to uh, the pet owning public. So for the American College of Veterinary Internal Medicine, uh, so medical oncology, cardiology, neurology, lots of different specialties. Uh, they have a web address, acvim.org, and if you go there, there's actually a pet owner section and uh, find a specialist um, application that will let you enter your geographic data and it'll find the closest person to you. Uh, similarly, the American College of Veterinary Radiology uh, maintains a similar database. Uh, their address is acvr.org. And again, they also have a pet owner's uh, portion of that website. So thanks for watching. Um, like us if you like us. Uh, and if pass this video on, if you know someone who's maybe struggling with some of these issues uh, and needs a little guidance. Um, and please understand that it's not possible uh, for us to offer either diagnostic or therapeutic advice uh, based on a patient that we've never seen before. And we'll see you next time.